As you can see now, here we have an outline of the structure of the chapter of the Daniel 11 hypothesis. This is theoretical, but take it into consideration. Verses 1 through 4 being the outline of the chapter, and in Daniel 10, 14, Daniel was told, Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people, Daniel's people, in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. The type being three kings in Persia, the first three kings of the south, the Christian nations, symbolized by the ram in Daniel chapter 8. The Christian nations aren't the lion until the woe of the fifth trumpet. As you can read in Daniel 7, there's a lion mentioned there, as well as Revelation 13, which coincides with verses 21 through 45 of Daniel 11. And many might say the ram is the Persians and the he-goat is Greece. Those were just the types. What did it just say in Daniel 10, 14? Thy people, Daniel's people, the children of Israel. The Christian nations, that is to say, if you're in Christ, then you're Abraham's seed, so that makes you part of the Christian nations being grafted in. All are one in Christ Jesus. Then Grecia, the he-goat, is the type of the Kenite nation. You know of the goat fig in the parable of the fig tree, and that Christ cursed that fig tree in the Gospels, saying, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, then you can say to this mountain, and he said this right after he cursed the fig tree, speaking of the Kenite nation, be cast into the sea and it shall be done. So the shadow government that works to bring about globalism, symbolized by the he-goat in Daniel chapter 8. It doesn't become the leopard of Daniel chapter 7 until the woe of the fifth trumpet. And it's important to understand, as far as the trumpets of Revelation are concerned, that the four hidden dynasties weren't completely set into place until 1945 with the United Nations and 1948 when Kenite occupied Israel, that Kenite nation came into being. It began in 1830 with the initial setup of the Hidden Dynasty of Education, but then in 1913, the Hidden Dynasty of Economics with the Federal Reserve, which was followed immediately by the First World War, after which the League of Nations, which you'll see written of, in my opinion, in verses 16 through 19, the first attempt at a one-world system. And that segued directly into the United Nations at the end of World War II in 1945. And that's when the third trumpet began to sound, the political dynasty. Also, as a direct result of World War II, the birth of the Kenite nation in 1948. Officially, that is to say, they existed before that. As we're about to read in Daniel 8, we're going to go there for further clarification that that's what this is speaking of. And we'll begin with verse 3. Then I lifted up mine eyes, Daniel, that is to say, and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. This is Ephraim and Manasseh, the one that came up last being Manasseh, the United States, the superpower, only really coming together in an alliance during the First World War. And the scepter of Judah is in Ephraim, the United Kingdom, that is to say. So there you have the three Christian nations, Ephraim, Judah, and Manasseh. And I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward so that no beast might stand before him, neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand. The British Empire followed by the superpower of the end times, the United States. But he did according to his will and became great. And as I was considering, behold, and he goat, this is the Kenites, the shadow government, came from the west on the face of the whole earth, meaning we're speaking globally here, and touched not the ground because it's a system, not a geographic location. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. I believe this to be the United Nations. And this horn, which is symbolic of power and a global power, because it came from the west on the face of the whole earth, and we see this in Daniel 11, verses 16 through 20, with the League of Nations followed immediately by the United Nations. And that's the one who sends out the razor of taxes, which is referring to the global carbon tax, in my opinion. 
And he came to the ram, the Christian nations, that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power, first absorbing the United Kingdom into the League of Nations. And because of Article 22 of the Covenant of the League of Nations, the British mandate came about, which involved British troops occupying Palestine, setting the stage for the beginning of this final generation with the establishment of that Kenite nation, geographically speaking. The fourth trumpet, the hidden dynasty of religion. That same year, the United Nations created the World Council of Churches. So there you have it. And I saw him come close unto the ram, the Kenite nation, the shadow government, come close unto the Christian nations, and he was moved with choler, that's rage, against him. The enmity between the two seed lines that you can read of all the way back in Genesis 3.15, between the serpent seed, the Kenites, and the woman seed, Christ. And if you're in Christ, you're Abraham's seed, the Christian nations. So the he-goat smote the ram and broke his two horns, broke his power. Horns are symbolic of power, absorbing America into the United Nations and even using America to bring it about in 1945. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand with the United Nations headquarters even being in Manasseh, in New York City, which is in America. Therefore the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken. And this is Daniel 11.20. And for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven, which indicates the beginning of the five-month-long hour of temptation. So this would appear to be the deadly wound written of in Revelation 13, but it isn't. The one world system hasn't emerged at the time 1120 of Daniel takes place, or the first part of Daniel chapter 8, where it says, therefore the he-goat wax very great, and if this is the United Nations being broken, that would appear to be a deadly wound, but that's not the one world system. The one world system is made up of four parts, as we know from Daniel 7, the lion, the bear, the leopard, and Daniel's fourth beast, the supernatural element. That's the one world system. And if one were to think that the deadly wound happened before that, then they would be deceived whenever the actual deadly wound takes place, mistaking the first two and a half months for the last two and a half months, setting them up to be deceived by Satan, thinking that he's Jesus' return. The deadly wound to the one world system does not, I repeat, does not happen until after Satan and his angels are cast out of heaven unto the earth, and then that seven-headed beast having ten horns, which is part of Daniel's fourth beast, ten fallen angel kings, rises up out of the sea, and it has the mouth like the mouth of a lion, feet like the feet of a bear, and it's like a leopard. The Kenites and their four hidden dynasties. There you have all four The Christian nations, the communistic nations, Russia, that is to say, and the Kenites and their four hidden dynasties being the infrastructure, as well as Satan and his angels, that locust army, they're Daniel's fourth beast. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And the dragon is Satan, and he would have to be here in order to give the first beast of Revelation 13 his power and his seat and great authority. Then it's wounded to death... One of his heads are wounded to death, as you can see in Revelation 13. This is the fifth vial being poured out upon the seat of the beast. So before it can be wounded to death, it has to exist first, and the dragon has to give him his power and his seat and great authority. He has to make that covenant with many for one week, which was a week of years, but it's been shortened to five months, as we know from Revelation 9. The three woe trumpets is the key. The first woe is when Satan and his angels are cast out of heaven unto the earth. Then the one world system emerges with both the United States and Russia together in a one world system. But then it's wounded to death. And then Satan appears as the false Christ, the little horn of the fourth beast of Daniel chapter 7. So again, at the woe of the fifth trumpet is what we're talking about here. After the horn is broken of the he-goat, And this is when the he-goat becomes the leopard. And for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. The four winds of heaven always means the five months. And out of one of them, out of Daniel's fourth beast, came forth a little horn. This is Satan appearing 
as the false Christ at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. He shall appear in Jerusalem. So if you weren't too careful, you'd be pretty confused when this happens if you thought that the deadly wound happened before the five months began, is my point. Don't be deceived. Look into it for yourself. Daniel chapter 8 and Daniel chapter 11, as well as Revelation 13 and 16. And it waxed great, the little horn, even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, he'll claim to be Christ, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. The daily sacrifice being sacrifices of love to the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll take that away because they'll begin to worship him instead of Christ, which is what Antichrist means in the Greek. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. So in verse 8 of Daniel chapter 8, you have the he-goat wax very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken. This corresponds with Daniel 11:16 through 20, especially verse 20, where you see the one who sends out the razor of taxes being destroyed within few days, neither in anger nor in battle, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. This is verses 21 through 30. And out of one of them, out of Daniel's fourth beast, after the deadly wound, came forth a little horn. This begins with Daniel 11:31, when Satan appears as the false Christ. And if you skip down to verse 20 of Daniel chapter 8, it says that the ram is the kings of Media and Persia, and the rough goat is the king of Greece, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. But this has to do with what will befall the people of Daniel in the latter days. So obviously it's not talking about Persia and Greece. That wasn't the latter days, and those weren't Daniel's people. In verse 22, now that being broken, the horn being broken of the he-goat, whereas four stood up for it, the four beasts that rise up out of the sea in Daniel 7, which is the same thing as the first beast of Revelation 13. Four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. This is Satan appearing as the false Christ. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, because he is the destroyer. That's one of his names, as we know from Revelation 9:11. And shall prosper in practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. He will slay a third of mankind, and a third of the world are Christian. Only those with the seal of God in their forehead will know what's really going on at that time and stand against Satan and his one world system. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, the true Christ, but he shall be broken without hand. And the end of this verse is in reference to the battle of Armageddon, when the beast and his armies go to war against he who sitteth upon the white horse, the true Christ, at the seventh trumpet, and his armies, the armies of heaven. So he shall stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. He shall be destroyed by the brightness of the coming of the true Christ, Satan's role of Antichrist, that is to say, as well as his one world system. And you can read of this in 1920 of Revelation. And it's covered at the end of Daniel 11 in verses 40 through 45, which is when the true Christ returns at the woe of the seventh trumpet and the battles of Armageddon and Haman Gog transpire. And Haman Gog has to do with Ezekiel 38 and 39 when Esau is destroyed from being a nation as well as the nations that he has with him in his confederacy. Satan's role of Antichrist and the one world system destroyed in the lake of fire. If you were to continue reading and go on to Daniel chapter 12, you'd see that it reads, And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book, those who take part in the first resurrection. 
This is when the great tribulation takes place, immediately after the tribulation of Satan, the tribulation of Almighty God transpires. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Some will take part in the first resurrection. Some will have to wait until the thousand years are finished to stand against Satan. Otherwise, they'll be blotted out in the lake of fire. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever.